Hey, what up? How are you guys doing? Here I am, finally, with uh, showing the uh, the concept or the POB for the uh, build that I would like to do. But I need to farm some gear. And more specifically, I need channeling uh, medium clusters. Uh, and now before before I go more into detail, you're looking at the the DPS, that's 8.3 mil. That is with basically full pad. If I take off um if I take off Ancestor Watchip, so this is without Ancestor like wall. So if I take that off, I put I take Perseric off, uh Blood Rage off. I'm not sure if I wanna use this with Wall Pact. I'm not entirely sure uh, how it's gonna feel like. And then uh We'll assume we haven't taken, we haven't hit anything, so we don't have Purifying Flame either. We also take that off, and then we take Flasks off. So that would be the damage with absolute, like, no temporary buffs. Uh, we can actually go as far as also taking away, uh, let's say we don't have a Awakener Orb for our Power Charges. Let's take do that, and then also take away Power Charges. So... Still over 2 mil with like just holding right click and spinning around, that's that's 2 mil uh, without pressing anything else. But okay, so about the build. Uh, the plan here is to use uh, Lethal Pride for Chainbreaker that gives us uh, uh, Rage region and our increases and reductions to Mana region instead of applying to mana region, apply to rage region. So with three uh, base uh, rage cost and we had like say 100% mana region, that would be six uh, rage region per second. And then it adds a three rage cost to any skill that you ever use. Even when casting an aura, it still adds that. So that's the big uh, drawback. Uh, so we mitigate that, well, we completely delete that for channeling skills by having six unwavering focuses, so this is 15% reduced cost of channeling skills. Uh, so six of these, so we have one on each each uh, cluster there, and then that is 90%, and then we add in tireless cluster, or potentially only three of these, if you had a different size thread of hope there. Um, we need another 10%, and this here is 12, or a total of 15 here. So that entirely remove, removes the rage cost from any channeling ability. Which is pretty insane uh, for any any channeling skill. So Cyclone, Winter or yada yada yada. And I think you can probably do this specific three with like cast on crit even. Uh, spell casting setups probably. We don't have, we only have one specific melee cluster and it's here and we could take that out and instead put like here or something like that so this is a pretty generic uh tree also this pathing could potentially go through the resist nodes here or through here you can like to unnatural instinct for aoe and you can do it here there's a bunch of different things you can do but yeah so the idea is here and the reason i'm i'm, I'm sendant because I don't have access to voices, which is how people are playing this uh, build in Trade League. So originally I wanted to do it as a uh, raider, and do, and then uh, go through somewhere here, take that and that instead of uh, this bottom. But it's just it's kind of too many points. Like you can kind of play it, but it has like instead of one hundred sixty one percent. Life on this, you have like 120. So I mean, sure, for soft core that should absolutely be viable. Uh, you can probably do any variant. You can do jug. You can probably do templar. Uh, sorry, a uh, dualist. Any of these three should be viable. The important part is being able to get the, the class jewels and then the tireless cluster. Uh, so we do ascendant to gain points and save points. So we gain points by being ascendant, you know, we get the uh, skill point there, uh, skill point there, skill point there, and two skill points there, right? Um, and uh, 
when it comes to your synergies. You could be Slayer, you could be Champion. Uh, the only thing that's important is taking one of the Ranger ones. Pathfinder is totally fine as well. I personally want the Raider, because as you might have seen, uh, we are getting some dodge here. Uh, something Raider, so that gives us permanent onslaught, because, well, if you run Frenzy, that instantly max range charges after the first pack of mobs, or during bossing, because we'll hit like almost 10 times a second. This is actually more than 10 times a second when we have the buffs on, but... And then it also gives us facing, so we don't need to worry about quartz mask. Also, we're cyclone, so... We cyclone through everything. Anyways, uh, we take the ranger pathing to get this uh, nice, efficient pathing there. Uh, I personally take champion, because I'm planning to go low life on this. As you can see, we have an uh, unreserved life here. So that gives us the... Uh, Overleech that you would get from Slayer normally. Uh, we lose the AOV for clearing, we lose the Culling Strike, and we lose the, the Reflect. However, but we, then we can drop Fortify as a link. We get uh, increased damage from the Taunt. We get some cur some from, not Curse Effect, the uh, Aura Effect, and then we get the Intimidate. And then obviously we lose the Taunt. So this allows us to run these gems. Uh, so, Cyclone is a must, obviously. Infused channeling is a must. It's insane, uh, yeah, like, damage and more speed. It's just, it's just good. Uh, Impale is a must. Pulverize is probably a must. And then the question is, Brutality, Bloodthirst, uh, Close Combat. Uh, or Fortify, if you don't take... Uh, if you don't take Champion. So, what could you drop? Well, if you're going low life, you have to use this. There's a, this Bloodthirst is just too insane uh, for low life. But then you would have to drop brutality, right? So I mean, you could do this. You could put fortify here instead, uh, instead of brutality, and go slayer. Like you could do that. That's 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 totally fine. Uh, but I want to take champion. Uh, do not need to worry about that. But either way, both are really good. I might even change my mind and go slayer after all. I don't know. We will see. <laughs> we will see. Um, obviously the numbers here are weren't exactly correct because the Slayer then you have to make sure that you take away the uh, take away the intimidate as well there but yeah either way both of these work fine I guess uh, when it comes to I'll go back here uh, Pathfinder is also really nice for getting some flash charges uh, you also get like a you get some life whenever you use a flask too. This is just really nice. Both of these are really nice, but I'm cap like uh, I'm going for dodge, and then the permanent onslaught and phasing is just is just really nice. And then obviously bathing has to be pretty like this. You get all the life. This is twenty percent elemental avoidance, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we'll take wind danger. Again, we're going dodge. So if we dodge, we don't get hit. That means that whenever we don't dodge and actually end up getting hit, we get, you know, we take less damage from it, and then we get a massive evasion boost. Uh, with a ball pack, uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is needed. It's pretty comfy. It gives a lot of survivability, but that might be enough. I don't know. We will... S something I need to test. Uh, having ball pack makes a bit, it a bit annoying to use Blood Rage. Uh, if you're not leeching from anything, because obviously we have no life region, right? And we don't have any kind of life recovery or anything like that. So that can be a bit iffy. Uh, we go for the base acro, get some some giga survivability from there. And then we have Thread of Hope here for getting these. These are depends if you want to run the exact reservation setup as I do. Obviously, Amplify is big, Discipline and Training is big. Uh, drop damage and get more life there if you wanted to. Uh, I have Sanctuary as a one point just because it's well of all res in one point and I'm planning to run shield uh, instead of dual build. But yeah, so take a look at some gear. So I have a Paradoxica. I actually have this exact Paradoxica, which is one of the reasons why I want to play this build. Uh, then I'm actually going to take a look at the items. Uh, I actually <laughs> made this while preparing some of the gear to show that I have like kind of ready. So I just, this was literally, I think four Veiled Chaos. I was actually trying to Veiled Chaos it to get a 
higher quality uh, for six linking attempt at some point, uh, but ended up hitting the double life and then the avoidance. So because I hit the avoidance here, so this the skill tree here, this is already sixty percent. Then using gloves for twenty five percent or helmet, I, I could potentially craft in those helmet. Gloves is some random evasion gloves, most likely. So that gets us to 90%. Uh, which means I need to get four enchanted jewels. I need one shock avoidance, one ignite avoidance, one freeze, and one chill avoidance. And that way I'll get to 100%. Uh, and uh, I'm planning to use a penitent mask for the fortify effect because we don't really have. Uh, the crush is a uh, minus 15% uh, fish reduction, and we don't really have fish mitigation uh, from like like an in like a reduced physical damage reduction, so or increased. So we don't have that. So the downside there isn't really anything. So it does mean that uh, instead of uh, running a one cluster with enduring focus, which you would probably otherwise run for the 25% chance to get an Endrin charge each second while channeling. That means that we can just go for crit on every single one of these. So you would go precise focus and unwavering focus. There is another notable uh, for an infusion that gives you movement speed and infusion effect, which is also very good. Gives you less physical damage taken, which is very strong, and that obviously movement speed and some damage. But precise focus is, in terms of damage is just. It's just way much better. Uh, I'm actually just put all the, the buffs on so you can see what kind of a momentarily uh, boss damage we have. Uh, like 8 million or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, obviously we don't have... We will never have a permanent uptime of Berserk and 50 Rage, so the the... The longer your Berserk is on, uh, the less rage you have. But currently with this BOB we have... How much rage? Where are you? You're somewhere here. Rage, rage. Why can't I find you? Why can't I find you rage region there? 10.5 uh, rage region, which is uh, it's a lot. It is, it is pretty fast, but this is also with... Three very good uh, moderation items. Yeah, so back here, uh, we can go. Well, I actually have one of the class jewels only, and that's the biggest thing I need to farm some of these. And the the best thing about not needing to go for the Endurin Focus, which I could get on this, it's an item level seventy five requirement, is I can do literally farm foothills for the jewels because the mods that we're looking for. Uh, the mods that we are looking for in this, this is a level 50 for the precise focus, and unwary focus is also level 50. So you don't even have the map for this, so you could, you can uh, farm foothills. I might need to make a video about foothills if I end up uh, doing that farming myself. It's a very fast way of farming uh, Delirium and Cluster Jewels if you don't have unlimited access to uh, orbs, like I don't. Uh, shield. There's a couple options. Uh, Crusader Shield Buckler is the, the, the zoomiest. Uh, Supreme Spike Shield has the highest uh, spell dodge. I don't have one, but I do have the second best base. And uh, the closer you get to 75 spell dodge, the more each percent uh, matters. So I might end up using this. In the POB, I have a Crusader Buckler. Uh, and here, the important obviously on top of life is getting uh, reduced reservation uh, we can go there for a quick so you know petrified blood with enhance the enhance is important to increase the, the one hit survivability ideally this should also be uh, anomalous so you get even even higher uh, prevention so you don't get one shot uh, then we run Pride, Flesh and Stone and Maim in the uh, the shield. And then Precision, Blood and Sun, and Red Banner on Arrogance on uh, 
on blood match. So basically, this is taken on life, right? Uh, and then we have just blood rage is linked with enhanced together with the better fight blood in the weapon. Boots would be berserk and hand second wind. Probably so smoke mine. I'm not entirely sure yet. We shall see. Uh, then plan to have Casman damage thing, purifying flame. This is very, very undervalued uh, thing to have. Uh, it creates consecrate ground, which make gives like a flat crit. Uh, as you can see there, it, it is a pretty hefty amount of damage just having that on Casman damage taken when I ever get hit. Sometimes that's why it's a low level. And this could also be a alt quality or another 5% increased damage taken from the Consecrate Crown. So that's very strong. And then we have Flame Dash. Now, actually, let's talk about the, the large Clash Jewels. Uh, I've blocked in attack damage Clash Jewels because that's literally what I have. I have the attack, attack uh, Clash Jewels. So I'll probably just roll those. And there's a lot of different outcomes here, but the one thing that you really want, regardless of what you want the cluster you use, is Feed the Fury, which is 30% uh, damage while leeching and 15% attack speed while leeching. This is just insane. If you're a rich boy and you got uh, 75 clusters, you could also have Devastator, which is 15% chance for 10% uh, Fuse Explosion, if enemies die on hit, I believe. So you could get up to 45% chance to go monsters go boom boom when you kill them by from hits uh, on your class tools which is kind of in interesting but yeah so i currently have the speed of fury and uh martial progress which is it's kind of nice uh it caps your accuracy very easily uh, but there's some other options as well uh, there's like Shield one works. There's also an that gives you 25% damage while you're having a shield, the attack damage while you're having a shield, and 5% life, which is pretty good. There's there's just a bunch. There's so many good like usable options that rolling in any random remote shouldn't be too hard. Um, the feed the fury is just very. I'd say it's very very good one. Uh, there's axe sorry uh the axe sword hybrid thing that works. Yield one works. Actually, I think I have them note somewhere here. Uh, yeah, large, large charge group would be for swords. It could be physical and it could be shield. So there's like four different large charge tools. So just get whatever eight passive. Uh, whatever eight passive there. And then, uh, yeah, just need to roll this. Then for jewelry, uh, I actually kind of have ish. This is potentially already rolled. We need to. I'm going to do a sling slam on this, and hopefully it gives me int strength hybrid or minimum power charge. If it gives me the minimum power charge, that means that then I don't need to worry about getting the minimum power charge on the shield through the awakening orb, which I don't really need. But it's it's just very nice. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna try on that. We have a. Vermilion Ring with Mana Regions and some resistances. Again, I'm gonna Ace Links this as well. Pray that it gets like Hybrid Resist, uh, Chaos, Fire, whatever resistances, attributes, because we're gonna need some attributes. Uh, and then we're gonna roll a uh, Assassin's Mark uh, Ring. It is Assassin's Mark is very, very, very good. Uh, this is, I believe, the POB is on Cirrus. Yep. If I take this off. You can see it is it is very strong even against bosses. Uh, I mean, well, of course, because marks don't have a well this anymore. It is giga strong, basically. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, this chest is after it's six linked. It's gonna be finished with three is gonna be changed and crit reforge. It's a guaranteed attack crit. Then I pray that it has ideally two open suffixes after that. Because then I would Aceling, pray for you know resistances, or uh, actually never mind. I can't Aceling it anymore because it has the, the the first mod. But so ideally this would hit attack crit. Well, that's a guarantee. Uh, maybe resist, and then an open suffix so I can either craft missing resistances, uh, int or 
ideally fortify effect uh, when focused. That's the ideal. Because uh, we're using Dread Banner, so for any big, big one-shot things, like for example, you know, Shape or something, let's say that we somehow don't have a Fortify, uh, for whatever reason, we're coming out of the, the bubble phase and then he decides to Lamelos. us, we can drop the Dread Banner and focus, we have a short uh, Fortify granted by Dread Banner, and then we obviously make it stronger with the, with the focus. Uh, I think I actually have the focus craft here, yeah. Uh, gloves, ideally you would get uh, two life rolls, hybrid and uh, the flat of course, and then aceling a prefix for damage while leeching, and then you have the prefix done, you do, prefix cannot be changed, and then chaos, reforge, fire reforge, something like that to get a resist, and then get the 25% Elemental avoidance there. My jewelry doesn't have the anoints, not anoints, the enchants. Oh yeah, also the all of these jewels are uh, like life what, with double damage. I probably have to get resistances or attributes on these, so the damage is definitely not going to be like that. It's just like me uh, looking at. But again, there's a lot of base still in this gear to get resistances, so I. Wouldn't be too worried about getting it. Also, I can potentially sacrifice some stuff and do this routing instead. Uh, this here would save. Actually, that's better to just do that. You'd probably just do that, honestly. That alone would uh, be helping a lot. But yeah, we'll see if we need to do that. Uh, not too worried about needing, like, getting that resistance uh, on this build. But yeah, uh, it's already longer than, longer than I anticipated. Uh, hopefully gives you some idea, POP is obviously going to be in the description and hopefully I'll get the five missing plushy jewels so I can actually uh, make this build because it looks pretty fucking badass. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.